Dr. Esteban Emilani. I am when I read his CV, it is a really big CV and really an academician like Oliver Traxer, consultant endurologist at the foundation Foundation Pigward Hospital in Barcelona, Barcelona, Spain. I have been to Barcelona last year. Wonderful place. He is clinical associate professor at the Autonomous University of Barcelona. He was trained under the tutorship of Professor Oliver Traxer and Mahesh Deshai sir at MPUH Nadiad, two very important uh, uh, persons in endo-urology, uh, Nadiad as well as the Oliver Traxer Tenon Hospital. He is member of the Euro Technology section at EAU and published more than 40 articles on endo-urology being his main area of interest and also his endo-urological treatment of QTUC. Now over to uh, Dr. Esteban Emilani. Thank you. Okay, um, first of all, thank you for the invitation to the organizers and everyone for being here. I'm going to talk about a bit of uh, flexible urethroscopy, but without flu uh, fluoroscopy, fluoroless flexible urethroscopy. I think this is a very important um, advance in what we do uh, nowadays. I think it's the normal evolution of flexible urethroscopy. And this is important because we, all know the consequences of uh, fluoroscopy. Um, think about your colleagues or senior colleagues that you have seen. There's always somebody that had cancer or cataract uh, surgery. You know, um, I always tell my residents, fluoroscopy gives cancer. We all have seen these um, cases about um, the orthopedic surgeons with their can with cancer in their hands or dermatitis in their hands. This is a very important issue that we should address. Now, the first rule about fluoroless urethroscopy for me is to place your C-arm. You always have to place your C-arm even if you're doing fluoroless urethroscopy because safety is the most important thing for our patient. So remember this. Now, we have published recently, uh, you can see here the reference, how to do the fluoroless urethroscopy, and I want to address this. First, you have to take a look to the checklist. The checklist is the most important thing to do preoperatively, so you can do it right. So I'm going to summarize a little bit the checklist. First, you have to check very well your images. Probably if you have this kind of cases, a horseshoe kidney or a um, fusion ectopic kidney, the going fluoroless is not the smartest way to go. So check the images and select very well your patients for doing this. Now, uh, the patient positioning. This is I, how I position my patient. Uh, I always do lithotomy position. I place a table next to me to put all the instruments. And I always systematically put my C-arm in the right hand of the patient and my screen on the left side of the patient. The important part about this is to uh, avoid putting metal in the field of the C-arm. This is important because you will avoid extra radiation that you don't need. Okay, so be systematic. Now, Protect yourself. Protect yourself and protect your um, the people in the OR. Use little glasses, little gloves, neck and body aprons, as you can see here in my colleague. And I try to use always dosimeters. It's very important to check your activity. We have three dosimeters, one in our, in our hand, one uh, next to our glasses because we want we want to see all the uh, fluoroscopy getting into your uh, eye and one that we use below the apron i just put it um, uh, above the apron just to show you but one that we use below the apron this is very important also now when you place the c-arm um, i try to place it always in the same position and systematically and i try to have an ultrasound in the or because it can give me some help for example by placing the um, double j stand or in a, um, at the end of the procedure so if you can have a ultrasound in your or or bring it up because you won't you'll have an extra tool 
Now, the position of the C arm is very important because if you're doing fluoroscopy, try to avoid these kind of situations where you do lots and lots of shots without any sense. So try to position very well your, uh, your C arm when you know there is the site of fluoroscopy that you want. Now, take a look at the settings that you're doing. Use single pulse, this is very important. It doesn't matter if you use single pulse compared to a continuous pulse, you have less radiation exposure, reduce the frames per second, and reduce the height of your C-arm. Place the C-arm as, as low as possible. This is really important to reduce uh, the radiation exposure. I always use the pedal. I like to use the pedal instead of, the, um, of a technician. I think this reduces also radiation exposure, but set your C-arm before doing this. And set your C-arm is also doing collimation. Collimation is very important to avoid this. So there's two kinds of collimation, for example, that I can do in my hospital. One is the round collimation that you reduce the exposure of the C-arm and then is the lateral uh, bars that you can do it. So uh, collimate before you um, do some fluoroscopy. Now, in order to do the procedure, you have to replace fluoroscopy with endoscopy. If you, what you don't see with the C-arm, you will see it with your endoscopy. And use your tactile feedback. This is why I recommend this to, to I recommend that this, this technique can be done with the most, um, with people that have a little bit more experience than people that are um, beginning. People that are beginning, I will recommend to use fluoroscopy to, to feel your tactile feedback, to know where you do, what you're doing, and to use fluoroscopy to, to, to be aware where you do, what you're doing. But if you're, you are a senior or you have had some experience, do it with endoscopy. So for the wire placement, I always um, place my wire without a um, fluoroscopy. I place the guy until I feel no progression, until I feel the stop, or until the orifice kinks or moves away. As you can see here, in this point, the orifice moves away, so I know that I'm in the kidney. Also, I try to use um, um, Terumo-like uh, guide wires for this. This is an Amplatz guide wires, but I try to do it. And once you feel the stop or the kink of the, um, of the orifice, you can check the length of the, of the guide wire. If the length of the guide wire is in the tip of your table, it usually means that you are in the kidney. So these are, these are two examples on how you can uh, control this. Now, you have to do the urethral assessment. You have to know that you are in the kidney, that there's nothing in the, in the um, ureter, so you can place your, your access sheet without any, any problem. Always do it systematically. And then to place the access sheet, you can place the tip of your semi-rigid scope at the UPJ and then measure against the access sheet where are you going to place it. So you won't pass the UPJ and you won't damage the, ure the ureter and the UPJ while placing the access sheet. So this is uh, how I do it. I know that my 35 centimeter access sheet is the same length as my short semi-rigid urethroscope. So I always have it in control and I just place my access sheet and I should, shouldn't feel any resistance. If I feel any resistance, I will just stop. Now you check the kidney systematically from the upper to the lower calyx because you won't do uh, you won't do any fluoroscopy. So check the kidney systematically because you're going to do this at the beginning and at the end of the procedure. Then perform the urethroscopy as usual. You can just uh, you don't need uh, fluoroscopy for this. You perform the urethroscopy as usual and then you check systematically again the kidney from the upper to the lower pole and then the ureter. This is really important to see if you have done any damage and you have any stones and you left any stones behind. For the double J placement, I do two things. You can do it uh, with, the, um, with ultrasound, as you can see here, 
when you where you can see the guide wire and then it will disappear while the double j is going up to the kidney you can see here in the image or you can place it uh, with endoscopy as you when you leave the kidney you know that the guide wire is in the kidney so you can place it just with the um with endoscopy now when to avoid fluoroless urethroscopy first if you have an impacted stone like this like this you don't know where the orifice is you don't know where you're doing avoid uh, fluoroless urethroscopy there's no need to do it here because you'll do more harm if you have a very difficult uh, ureter, very kinked, like an accordion ureter, don't do flu uh, fluoroless urethroscopy. Be aware of where you are. Safety first, uh, my friends. Then, if you cannot find the stone, obviously use fluoroscopy because you have to treat very well the patient. So this is why the first rule is to place your CR because you don't know what you're going to find. And if you have difficult cases, a urethral stone, if you're doing encrusted stents uh, with flexible urethroscopy, if you're doing endopilotomy, or if you're doing a difficult case, as um, this first case is a horseshoe kidney, don't uh, do fluoroless. Have it always in your hand for difficult situations. With this, you can reduce up to 80% of the radiation exposure. 86%, 86% is a lot of radiation, a lot of radiation. And it can be possible in up to 90% of the cases. So try to do it. This, you'll have similar operative times, similar results and similar complications if you follow the literature. So it's something that we should think about. And I think that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Ben. A wonderful presentation. Just to add, even access sheet when we use, we pass through the uretroscope and directly under vision we push. That is what uh, the point we are using for last three thousand cases. But this will be uh, done only with. Uh, Wolf uretroscope and uh, access sheet of 28 centimeters. Uh, it snugly fits even the guide wire water doesn't go. It's like visual operator. But anyway, your points are uh, really important which have to be practiced in every case. Thank you very much for that nice presentation.